Welcome to Marist Sports Center. I'm your host, Carissa Kelman. First tonight, we take a look at women's water polo who had an outstanding season. They opened the NCAA first round tournament, defeating number 23 seed Salem. Unfortunately, they fell to the number one seed USC in the quarterfinals. Let's take a look at their highlight from the month and listen to an interview with a player. McCullough opens the scoring here for Marist to give them an early 1-0 lead as Miriam Lazat rattles one off the bar here to tie the game at two apiece. That was her first of four this game. Here's her second as she puts Marist ahead late in the first. Moving on to the third quarter, here's Victoria Orlova scoring her first of the game. She was one of four Marist goal scorers with two or more goals. Here's Lazat slotting home her third of the game. And here is Lazat slotting home her fourth of the game. And with about a minute left in the game, grad student Justine Castro puts away this wild shot for the dagger as the Marist Red Foxes win the MAC championship 13-10 over the VMI Cadets. Uh, I'm joined today with uh, Marist Water Polo graduate student uh, Justine Castro. First of all, Justine, congratulations on an incredible season. You guys had an undefeated regular season and MAC tournament, won a MAC championship and the first round of your NCAA tournament. Uh, first question I got to ask, how did it feel when the clock hit zero and the, the buzzer sounded in that MAC championship game? Yeah, thanks, Daniel. Um, it was, I mean, I'm pretty sure I shed a tear or two um, after, but it was, it was so hard. Like we put so much work into it in such a short amount of time that it was, it came on so fast but it was like so, so much excitement and so much like, uh, yeah, just like happiness, pure happiness. I, I smiling from cheek to cheek, cheek to cheek. Uh, it was, it, it was like, they were, part of me was happy. Part of me was also sad. Like this is my last time, but what better way to go out? Um, so that was definitely a great feeling. It's bittersweet. <laughs> mm -hmm. And obviously uh, it was a very hectic season for you guys. Uh, you played, all your regular season and MAC tournament games within a two week period. And I know your last four games of the regular season were all smushed together into that one weekend where you had three games in one day. And uh, then just the next week you had that triple overtime semifinal game. How, what was that like? And how did you guys kind of pull through and end up winning all those games? Yeah. So exactly like you said, we had, I believe six games in one week. And then we had a one week break to prep for MAC championships and then uh, the championship tournament. Um, it was a lot of stress on our bodies and our mental because I mean, we're going through school at the same time and everything is just happening so fast. Uh, we pretty much got the green light that we would have a season a day or two before that week when we were, um, when we had the six games. So, like I said, everything came so fast, but every game that we went went into is just the mentality of like one game at a time. So little by little, as we started tacking away at like the wins that we like really needed to, to even get into the final, like our, our drive and like every, like the team just like really started coming together and like building the mindset together that like we can do it and we could actually like get through this big storm that came our way. But at the end of the day, everyone was just so happy to play and touch the water because it had been so long. Um, I know for myself, it had been a year that I was out of the water. So just being able to be in the water and compete around your best friends, is it's definitely a great feeling. Mm -hmm. What a season they had. Thanks, Dan. Now we move on to women's rowing, who defended their 2019 MAC championship title this season, advancing to the grand finals, which will air on ESPN3 this Sunday. Let's take a look at their highlight from that championship. Marist Women's Rowing successfully defended its title and won the 2021 MAC Championship on May 16th on the Cooper River. It's been an unorthodox season for Marist. They were off the water for eight weeks and did not compete in a race until May 1st. The Red Foxes advanced to the grand final with the second fastest heat time among all boats. After going stroke for stroke with Jacksonville in the first quarter, Marist picked up three seats for an early lead. Marist and Stepson were wire to wire. Check this one out. Look at them dead even. That was 16 thousands of a second separating Maris from Stetson. The Red Foxes secured their second consecutive title, sweeping the Varsity 4, Varsity 8, and second Varsity 8 Grand Finals for 54 points. Now let's take a look at the Maris baseball team, who had an amazing season. 
splitting 2-2 two two in a series with Quinnipiac and finishing up the season 17-9. Let's take a look at their highlight and hear from Dylan Hoy. Maris Quinnipiac in his second inning, Tyler Capucci adds to the early lead with an RBI single into left field for a 3-0 edge in the second. Later in the sixth inning, Robbie Armitage slams a ball off the left field wall, which drives in two more runs, and Maris stretches their lead to 8-1 to in the top of the six. This one was all Maris. Except in the seventh inning, Colton Bender doubles to right field and drives in two runs to make it 9-4. to four. But that would be all they get, and Maris wins this one 9-4 to four in seven innings. Recording. So okay, I'm here with uh, shortstop for Maris baseball team, uh, Dylan Hoy. And um, what led to the success that you guys had this season? Yeah, so honestly, I just feel – we all came together and had that, that one common goal. You know how everybody talks about it, like when you're on a team, you always want to win a championship or they became closer because they, they just led to that one goal. And, and that was us. We really wanted to win a MAC championship. But the biggest thing was just getting on the field and playing. Like, mm-hmm. remember when we had that, uh, that big one-month pause and there wasn't any yeah. classes, no, no sports activities, we couldn't even practice. So during that time period, we would all go down the, the field, we would go um, – around the corner to the fair um, Fairview field and just practice together. And we just kind of all bonded that way and came together and said, look, once we're allowed on the field, if we ever are, um, we just want to get that opportunity and just win as many games as possible and, and try to make it as far as possible. And I feel like that was just the biggest thing that, that led to our success in us going, I it was 18 and nine for the year. Yeah, that's a pretty good record. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Do you think last year with COVID shutting down your season affected you guys in this way a little bit as well? I would say so, honestly. I mean, we were a pretty, I wouldn't say young team, but un- inexperienced because they, uh, they had a lot of guys who graduated last year that were starters. And we had a, a bunch of freshmen that were coming in to play, a bunch of sophomores who didn't play at all. That was the first time. So we were just all starting to mold and kind of figure each other out. And I felt like that, 12 games that we had everybody was really starting to come together and right before we got into Mac play we were starting to figure it out but then COVID kind of shut us down so it was hard to kind of get over that hump yeah so with COVID affecting your guys season this year uh, I noticed that you guys played a lot of back-to-back double headers how did you guys prepare for that because that had to be a lot of fatigue yeah no that that was really hard, especially when the time period that we had to play them due to uh, the extensive shutdown that Marist had. Um, we had to play, I think it was 26 games in the matter of like 20 days or 21 days. Jeez. And everybody, we had a lot of injuries and a lot of guys were banged up, but still playing the games to get through it. Um, but I feel like that that goes back to just us bonding and coming together for that one goal. Um, even though we were injured, we, we kind of, we didn't keep it quiet, but we just, you know, played through it and we knew that we had a chance to get out there and, and win a championship. So um, we were just wanting to do anything for that. So we kind of, you know, we would just get through it, you know, ignore the injuries. And, and that was that really, it was, it, it was hard, I would say, but it was worth it. Yeah. And um, last question for you. Uh, <clears throat> what are your goals for next season after losing first round of the Mac tourney this year? Yeah, I mean, I mean, everybody could probably say come back and win a MAC chip, um, and that's honestly our goal. I can truly say that. Like, we all have a little bad taste in our mouth after losing that uh, that third game against Canisius. That was a rough loss. Um, the way the game was going, we thought we had it, and we kind of just lost it at, at the last three innings. But um, you know, we're we're all talking still. We're um, we're ready to get back out there in the fall. We can't wait and just start that journey again. And I truly think that. And it's going to be a special year next year for, for all the guys. Sounds good. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Lastly, we'll take a look at the Marist women's lacrosse team who fell to the Fairfield Stags in the MAC quarterfinals, but finished their season 3-5. Sienna's midfielder, Carrie Goretti, with the game-winning goal. It is 17-16. Sienna takes the win. Let's take another look at that. What a shot. Marist falls to their rival. And that has been Maris Sports Center. Again, I'm your host, Carissa Kelman. Thanks for tuning in.